Hey everyone, welcome to Architecture for Thought. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've been on here, so I thought I'd do a live session for a concept design I'm developing for um, Icon's 3D print competition. If you're not familiar, Icon is a large 3D printing company. They're 3D printing homes basically all across America at this point, and they've got a competition to design a home that can be printed and built for under 900 or it's $99,000. So basically $100,000. Um, I had a couple concepts. Um, so I wanted to jump in and work on some mid journey concepts with you guys. So let's get to it. So I had a couple of images that I have been using. Uh, if you're familiar with some of my previous videos, um, I did a, a sketch to render video that featured this image and I had actually done this image um, for this competition entry. And the idea was basically that you can 3D print um, a few of these mud huts together um, or individually to kind of create a village or you'd be able to expand on it. So it's sort of an expand, contract, individual versus collective type of uh, conceptual approach. And uh, I can't take complete credit for that. Uh, I do have to reference these amazing uh, Muslim mud huts that I've been starting to study a little bit more. Um, just some beautiful textures. Um, I'll leave some information about them, but they're basically built uh, by hand and in communities, in villages in groupings like this um, where they basically wall off and create an enclosed courtyard together so i thought that was a beautiful concept kind of very simple um, obviously prove that these things can be built for low cost in terms of uh, materials and now labor is a different question but when you replace the labor with automated processes obviously uh, that has an effect on the cost so uh, this in combination with something that um, a lot of my clients have been asking for recently. I run a high-end uh, residential architecture company and uh, everyone's looking to do modern homes or at least more often, um, at least where I'm located. And people are really liking the style of the single slope shed roof and it's actually a very affordable um, construction technique it's you know there's not a lot of ridge lines or intricate geometries associated with the, the roof line so uh, I imagine combining the mud huts with the single slope shed could get us some pretty um, affordable homes so that's where that image came into play now, when I used the image and tried plugging it in as a reference image and designing over it with some uh, prompting, uh, I've been coming up with things that look, I think, not very inviting or homey uh, and have been missing sort of the modern flair or edge that would make people comfortable living in these types of structures. Uh, these look more like hobbit huts than high-end luxury architectures. But now here, um, just simply changing one of the images out for something that looks a little more streamlined and the right combination of words uh, did start to get us some more modern aesthetics and uh, featuring uh, larger skylights, what looks like could be single slope roofs in there. So. I wanted to continue playing with those and sort of merging these two concepts. So the last one I had here was still using a, the previous image I had, uh, which was this plugged in with the mud hut terminology. Um, but I cleaned it up, the terminology at least, to include some words that were more um, optimal for creating modern architecture, like sculpted, luxurious architectural villa, creased flowing geometry. Uh, I'm suspicious that the flowing geometry is getting us uh, a little too much like mad architecture or recent Zaha 
projects with the fluidity. I want to steer away from that and stick with a little bit more of the sculpted because I think that's going to be more um, affordable, achievable with the 3D printing technology, at least where it's at today. So I'm going to copy this over. And again, if you're not familiar with how to plug in reference images, I've got previous videos on that. Uh, but you basically drag and drop into the message box. You click enter, you open the image, and you take the URL. And then when you're ready to prompt again, you plug the URL in first after typing imagine. And it uses that as a reference image to develop your image off of. So let's continue forward with this. I'm going to do forward slash imagine paste that in there and I'm going to modify this a little bit and I might actually combine some of these images together to really refine the design but I wanted to explore this one still a little bit cinematic wide angle professional photo of a sculpted luxurious architectural villa with creased and flowing geometry so I'm going to take the flowing out for now Just say creased geometry terracotta clay textured with dimples and intricate striations. I want to take the dimples out. Textured with striations. And when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm also imagining, you know, what is the functionality? What is the purpose of some of these ornamental things? Striations, in my mind, uh, can host a variety of functionalities in terms of directing rainwater, um, serving as joint locations, cold joint locations, expansion, contraction joint locations, um, things of that nature. But let's continue on here. So I got large skylights. Artificial lighting is always good. It basically means you're turning on the lighting in the image. Located in a dry, arid climate for the competition. They also want you to locate some of these. So uh, I'm going to do a variety of kind of climate designs but I just wanted to start with this dry arid climate a little foggy with a looming storm in the distance just to create some drama artful tasteful elegant architecture modern design um, and I've noticed you know when you start piling in all the words like this uh, the things at the back end tend to get a little lost unless they're very separate or unique um, I'm going to take the modern design cut it out and put it towards the front, a cinematic wide angle professional photo of a modern designed sculpted luxurious architectural villa. So there we go, clean up this back here. Sunrise with gleaming bright sun. Okay, so let's give that a try. So because I've got the clay textured, I'm still expecting it to look something of this nature. And the luxurious villa always kind of amplifies um, well the quality of the architecture that it's producing. But uh, I think I meant to say it also not amplifies, but it enlargens the the actual architecture. Where, for instance, in this one, it was a very short, simple prompt, so it was obviously leaning a little bit more on the uh, reference image. But it was just an architectural villa with white stucco, clay, mud facade, skylights in the desert during a bright, colorful sunrise, foggy, cinematic, AR 16 by 9. Um, I want to take that again and just continue playing on that. So here's the images that this came up with. It's steering very far away from what a 3D printer can do. So, um, you know, I want to course correct that, but let's plug this one back in. And let's see, I liked where it was going. I think it didn't have enough kind of mud qualities and I wanted to add some striations or texture. So white stucco, clay, textured with striations. I'm wondering if I just put mud hut in there. When you add the hut, it gets a, a bit hobbit, hobbity. <laughs> um, like garden gnomes are gonna live in it, and I don't want that, but I wanna try it. Mud hut, exterior. Panels. 
Skylights. Okay, let's just give that a go. And let's refine this one again. Pull it back a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two images and kind of combine them together. Uh, I think I might do a little bit of a, a modern design that has just the shed roof and that type of thing so we can combine all three images together. But um, I think I'm going to take the luxurious back out of here and the modern, the modern design. Sculpted architectural villa. Let's see what that comes up with. Okay, these are pretty nice. I'm liking these. Um, sort of a, a unique... Uh, they're, they're still a little bit too fluid for me. I want to steer away from the, a little bit of the fluidity. Um, I like the... You can see there's sort of an edge condition here where it's making it crisp. So if I don't think I had the creased geometry in on this one, but it's throwing in some striations, but not globally, more like locally as a little texture. I want to see if I can get that to be a little more uniformly textured. It's got some nice kind of geometry merging the forms together. So this one, yeah, still, still too much for me. We gotta play up the mud hut. I don't even want to open that up yet and browse it. Let's see. Sculpted architectural villa, crease geometry, terracotta clay. Yeah, I don't know. This one's just. It's getting a little too far away from me. I think the cinematic stuff up front maybe is kind of playing it up too much. You know, you have to remember that these are referencing databases, so as soon as you put in cinematic wide-angle photo, there's probably not a lot of cinematic wide-angle photography of uh, mud huts. So there's more cinematic wide-angle photography of expensive luxurious homes that probably look like that so i'm going to take that out we don't need that in this case i'm just going to say a sculpted architectural villa with creased geometry let's just see where that gets us and let's play with this one a little bit i kind of want to see where version two of that one goes and We'll do this one and then we'll jump to the modern single slope roof so we can merge that image. See if I add sculptural into this white one. Architectural. Got the uh, imagine prompt. Yeah, these are looking pretty cool. Um, it almost looks like they have some striation on them. These do. I'm really liking that. Not liking that uh, doorway there. So I know there's some new features that came out. Um, Uh, one of them was Tune, which is interesting. I want to do a video on that. And the other one was something like a, a replace, a very region, uh, which, you know, obviously you can highlight that and just pop that out. Or Photoshop's got a great generative uh, fill tool now. But these are looking pretty good. I think we might be able to continue developing some of these and then merge them with some of our other images. So I'm going to close out some of these tabs here. So in this one, we added the sculptural geometric just to see what we get. And those are nice too. Um, 
more more of this one than, than any of the rest. Um, I like the sculptural word because it, it gives you some things that are more defined a lot of the times, but then it can also give you things that are a little too abstract, so you have to be careful with that one. Um, and this one is just, it's not meeting my expectations. Uh, you might just have to ditch it. We'll give it one more try, give it one more chance here. Actually, you know what? Let's do a little experiment. Since we like what's going on here, I'm gonna take that. Copy it in there and steal this image. See what happens with that. In the meantime, we'll just do sort of a rogue um, prompt here. See if we do uh, a simple modern single slope. Simple modern architectural villa with a single slope roof. Then I'm gonna steal the back half of this so that the uh, environment is consistent. Those are better for the uh, previous one. Which is interesting, it's just a, a different reference image. So it just shows you how uh, how much the reference image is, it, it's just colors basically, the change of materials, how much of that affects it um, in the desert, blah, blah, blah. So let's see what that comes up with, it should be fun. Um, so for this one, was liking it without the uh, sculptural geometric. I think we can just continue playing off of some of these for now. And I want to see where this one goes. Uh, one, two. Some variations of two. That one's even not bad, but one, two, three, two, three. Um, I want to, you know, stick with this idea that they are groupings of similar geometric typologies. So that um, there, there looks to be some modularity to it. And now I know with 3D printing, uh, you know, it's basically the introduction of mass customization. So the idea of modularity sort of seems archaic when you're 3D printing unique geometries uh, for every print. But I think for consistency purposes, for the images, it would look nice to keep it consistent. So this is, these are looking a little too. Modern. Simple, quaint. Minimal, small, cute. Gotta use it. Mid journey knows it. Simple, quaint, minimal, small, cute, modern architectural villa with blah blah blah. Forgot to throw in the modifier here. Let's see where that goes. Okay, these are pretty cool. So these aren't gonna be final or anything in terms of that, but I'm really liking where this one's heading. So let's use that one. I'll try and wrap this up in a few minutes here. Just some variations on two and upscale it while we're at it. Uh, these are fun too. This one's kinda 
neat. Like the, the kind of sand dune gesture that repeats there. This one's interesting, it's just a little too loopy and, and wild. And this one's nice too, but not getting enough sort of glazing in there. So let's upscale one, two, three, do a variety variation on it. Okay, those are better. I, also, I forgot, did the wrong modifier on it, but I like this. This one is basically exactly what I was going for. So let's try that one more time with the modifier corrected. Dash AR sixteen by nine. Okay. Okay, so we have these. Um, I'm gonna open them up so we can get their URL and just for fun, kind of start merging some of these together. Copy that one. but I'm gonna to need to do a little more work on those so that they can merge properly. For the time being, I'm gonna just take this one, one, two, upscale two. Let's see if we just prompt them together. And that'll be the start of uh, start of a concept design, I think. Let's see what happens here. And then uh, I'll continue to do a little series like this on basically the development of this concept design. I wanted to use AI just because it was an opportunity to work on a competition entry with a non-paying client, just you know, using my own time. Um, to explore some of these concepts, but I'm liking it already. It's uh, modern, refined. I can see where some of these could start to reflect a competition entry, especially this, this one down here. I'm not sure about that wing spoiler flying out there, but this one looks nice. So anyway, hopefully uh, this was informative to, to some level. Uh, like I said, I'm going to continue working on some of these so that we can have some more uh, content and sort of walk through together what a workflow would look like for a competition entry. And uh, sorry if I didn't get to any of your comments down here. I'll take a quick look before I log off. But uh, it does look like we got a couple here. Um, greetings. People manage to use seed to the render multiple different views of the same character. Have you been able to accomplish? Uh, yeah, the seed thing with me, not not quite. I haven't been able to really use it um, really reliably. So, um, sorry, I know I'm talking with the mic in front of my face there. Uh, it, it's I have, have not been able to use it reliably. It's been more reliable uh, when I've used it on um, control net 
generators and things of that nature. So, uh, and I've seen people do it reliably for like character development, but not with architecture. But I do have a cool new tool that I will be showing you guys. Um, I'm forgetting the name of it right now, actually, but um, stay tuned. And there is a AI tool that allows you basically to plug in an image and then rotate the image and produce um, backside, side view. And then I'm imagining being able to use those different images, create um, the AI generated 3D models and combine them together in a single model so that we can get um, basically an AI generated full concept. Um, let's see what else. Second question. Say you have a model building like this one you're doing now and then you want it to render some indoor images from the same building. Yeah, the same thing. I mean, you're, you're basically, you can use it as a reference image and start prompting interior um, but it, it's not going to really hold the geometry or anything like that for you. Um, yeah, it looks like you kind of came to the same solution there with the uh, interior prompts over the exterior. Nice, thanks for sharing. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for now. Uh, like I said, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for some more sessions like this where we'll just work through together what a workflow looks like uh, using some of these AI tools. So.